everybody, and welcome to What's Your Deal with Doug Gleason, man. Number one. Look at us go. Uh, Woo! Yeah, I've been dreaming of this shit for a long time, man. Long time and, coming, Dougie. Uh, we'll probably end up making adjustments and doing little things. For instance, I wanted to do it for two hours. I was already told one hour is <laughs> long enough. One hour should be the There standard. we go. So we've already cut off an hour. And if you want to do two, you can come twice. <laughs> that's what my ex-wife used to tell me. <laughs> that's why we're divorced. <laughs> I think that's why we're exes, you know. But uh, anyhow, I feel that we're very lucky today to have our first uh, guest here. All right. Well, number one, I'd like to introduce my uh, producer, Ryan Demerest. Yes, thank you, Ron. Demerest. Ryan Demerest, yes. Yeah, Demerest. Thank you. Yeah, he's a great guy. And uh, without him, we wouldn't be here. And uh, my very first guest, Kara, what's yes. your deal? I know, right? I thought that there would be some. <laughs> well, okay. Number one, my whole idea of my podcast is uh, I know a lot of people. Like I have a lot of phone numbers in my phone and I don't know any of these people, you know? I mean, like I know you as the bartender from uh, down the street here. and Yeah, nope, the bell. Uh, but I, you good old bell rings again. But you also didn't start there as the bartender when no, I met you. That's not how we met. Yeah, yeah you were just. We met the, at the bell. And you've been this lovely woman to me. And, uh, you know, you went on a date with me to one of my friends' uh, houses. And it I, was the 4th of July. Yeah. It was so much fun. All those at, fireworks. Yeah, my Galvin's. Nice. And it was awesome. And uh, so much fun. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for so, inviting me. That was yeah. awesome. So on the way there, I told her, hey, man, I'm going to probably be hanging out with all my friends. Just be just go do your thing. And she just found somebody. And holy shit, she had 10 times better time than I did. You know, and I was like, <laughs> God damn. I love what was that the game lady. that we played that I kicked y'all's asses in? Oh. Uh, was it Cars of Humanity or what was oh, it? Yeah. Cards Against Humanity? Yes. Yeah. And I won twice. Like nice. the two games that we played, I won both nice, of them. Nice. And that's when Mike was, he was like, oh, shit, she's got us all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> and now that I, was so much fun. And, and then all the kids that we were given, all the, like, we would have them come up and, like, be like, oh, which, which firework do you want us to lot off next, you know? And they would like, I want that one. I want that one. And then we would just go lot them off. I mean, thousands of dollars worth of fireworks. Yeah. And I got to light the the grand finale. I never lit and go. There was like four damn crates full of just things with this humongous like lighter thing on the the very end. Right. You know, That's oh my goes. goodness, That's like that area. hundreds, hundreds of them in this in these four thin crate. And I got to light it. I was so excited. Yeah, I like I lit tons of fireworks that night. <laughs> but yeah, that was an awesome day, Dougie. Yeah, it really truly was. But it it turned out our love did not carry both ways, you know. But she's found it. Well, you know what? Let's go back to Kara. What's your deal? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I moved back here about two years ago from Kentucky. Oh, no. I think you should start her earlier than that. Like what? What I would you know. like to know, Dougie? I'd like to know who's your best friend. I'd like growing up. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's still today. I don't know. Her name's know. Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. How long did you know her? I've known her since the sixth grade. Okay. So tell me what's so great about Jenny and the sixth grade. You got a story well, about is the her, sixth is grade? Is her number still eight six seven four three zero nine? I got that would be the one that's the same. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke, guys. I no, no, no. I, like I, I, I get it. I, I get the reference for sure. No, Denny, um, like she moved from Colorado the same year to Kentucky the same year. I moved from Idaho to Kentucky. And her last name is Halverson and my last name is Fritz. So our lockers were very, very close to each other. And that was like we were both starting out the sixth grade in a new state with no friends. 
So anyway, so she kept on coming over and she would like talk to me and I was really shy at the time. And I would be like, okay, you know, like, hi, you know, I didn't know I had a friend. And she's like, no, you will be my friend. <laughs> and from then on, we've been best friends. There you go. That's she's it. like, no, you will be my friend. I'm not taking no, no for an answer. All right. Uh, well, giddy up. All right. So th th that's, that's how it started. So yeah, that's, She's been my best friend ever since. Yeah, for sure. She's awesome. She's a did, good person. She didn't say it as a country woman, though, did she? Yeah, well, because she was from there before she moved back to Colorado for a couple of years. Oh, okay. And then she moved back to Kentucky. Ah, okay. So, because I, I love the country accent. It's just so amazingly beautiful. Uh, all right. Well, then let's move back to your next story. What do you got? Right. Well... <laughs> putting you on the spot um you know i i started the first okay how about this the first time i ever oh, met <laughs> the first time i ever met you dougie uh -huh. okay matt and i were coming in from like we were working at bauer still and um the first time and then matt and i were coming into the bar and we were out there like on the the dance floor area and you were just like talking to people and you were like singing and stuff and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to like this guy. <laughs> and we we started talking right away. The second I, I walked in or we walked in, you were like talking to us and we're like, yep. You know, and that's how I met you. And then I got you to like dance in a circle on the ground. Yeah. And, you know, it's really funny because Matt, uh, the guy you walked in with. Yeah. One of my best friends. Yeah. He was very offstandish to me. And well, he's he's but you guys came or he came in at least half a dozen times being offstandish, you know. And at one point I just told him, Hey man, if you're not gonna be cool to me, I'm gonna just stop talking to you, you know. And uh the next time he came in, he uh, made me a uh a magnet button for my refrigerator and it says fuck you on it yeah and that's when i fell in love with matt you know it's like okay he's you know? awesome he's he's definitely one of my my all-time best friends for sure yeah but he's a good guy yeah, yeah. hands yeah. down <laughs> Very we, we've been through some 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 shit yeah. have, you, have you ever been married no i have not been married have you ever been in a long-term relationship i have i've been in quite a few any good ones? I'm in one right now. <laughs> I, well, mean, I mean, that's a year and a half. Okay. Long. Okay. But my longest one is eight years, to be okay. completely honest. And but the one I'm in right now that I've been in for a year and a half, it's, of course, we have our ups and downs, but he's, he's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. so, but like the one with eight years. Yeah. Uh, do you speak with the gentleman anymore? Do you have any kind of relationship? Well, um, we're still friends on Facebook, and he'll like a lot of my posts, and he's he's with someone too. Yeah. Which, like, um, because. She was with him through three because there was like a couple year hiatus that when when I broke it off. And so but no, he seemed really happy with her and I'm really happy for them, uh -huh. you know, and I really like that because. No, way, I understand you know, after eight years, if you, if, if you don't feel something, then, you know, I don't know. So anyway, I had to go my different way and he understood and he went his and he found her. And, you know, it's like, I think they're much more like better, like better suited, I guess I would say. Correct. You know, correct. Because I, I needed him at the time. Like we met in college, you know, and it, it was it was awesome, you know, for for most of the years. I mean, he came back each time with a lot of PTSD and things, you know, that we would talk through and, you know, like, you know, and I yeah, must wish him the traumatic. best. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um he was in Afghanistan when Katrina happened. So he had the choice between um, either staying in Afghanistan 
or coming back to um, the states in like uh, New Orleans and stuff in Louisiana and helping out in the hazard, like, you know, like the catastrophe that way. So he came back because he actually um, was a photographer for ESPN when he wasn't doing his tours. And so he brought his camera and he was like showing me all kinds of like crazy pictures that like of alligators and bodies and things, you know, like that he came back and he's like, he's like, I can't believe this is like the United States of America, you know, because it did not seem like that. I mean, it seemed like a war zone type deal, you know, after the hurricane came through and everything. Right, right, right. So anyway, he had he had a lot of that when he came back. But no, I, I wish him the best. I think, you know. I know he wishes me the best. We're still friends on Facebook, you know, but now do I talk to him? No, I don't need to. Yeah. We need to buy a new table. I don't like this one. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get some really thick and beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, But uh, yeah, I uh, was sitting here just prior to you getting here today and, uh, one of my exes called me up and we were together for like 10 years. Which one? Uh, her name's Gloria. Yeah. Uh, your love. We were, no, oh, I don't know that I loved her. I, she was just a truly amazing I woman. That was the one for eight years. Oh, and it seems to be the, and the last, magic number, <laughs> the last two years were pure hell. You know, but I finally, yeah. I finally got my ass out of there, you know, and, but she has called me back because I think she remembers eight years too, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe the two years of her cuntism, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it takes two to tango D- Dougie. And, but like I tell her the eight years you gave me made me into the man I am today. And I choose to never think about the two years that proceeded. And I've told my second wife that. And my first wife, I just say, I don't know. You gave me two decent boys because we never talk. And I've kicked the shit out of her husband a couple of times. So Hmm. we're not on speaking terms, but... (laughs) Okay, so after that, though, let's get to some. Yeah, well, you know what? For us, though, like I didn't have bad years. It's just we just grew apart. Okay. You know, I I moved up to Chicago for a job, and he still lived in St. Louis. Yeah, that's not much. That's hard. You know, so just we just kind of grew apart. But I'm glad that I didn't have two like shitty years. (laughs) I don't know if I would have been able to put up with that. It's a long. It's a a lot of years to have shitty years. Well, she ended up, she got breast cancer. Okay. And then, but the thing was, is she's like a tight knit Mexican family. And so like, she'd go for like, to get her uh, chemo or Mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. And her whole family would be there. And the only guy that was missing was me. And the reason I was missing is, Nobody could pay the payments on the property we were living on. You know, the lights, the electricity, the property taxes, the, that was me. So I had to go to work every single day. Yeah. And then, so she became a breast cancer survivor. I think she didn't like her body anymore because she was missing a breast and I, that didn't matter to me one bit. It truly didn't, you know. But then she started becoming angry that I wasn't there during her breast cancer situation. And it was like, kind of seemed to me like that Jesus poem where why there was only one pair of footprints in the sand, you know? Yeah. It's that's like a, without an me, way to look at that. without me, we wouldn't have this house. And then at one point she actually told me, and I'm sorry, I don't want to make this about me and we'll fix this in future ones. But uh, she told me, I don't even charge you rent to live here. It's like, what are you talking about? I pay every goddamn bill that comes into this house. It's, it was, you know, above a thousand bucks, you know. And 
she told I told her, well, how much do you want me to pay rent? And then you take care of everything. She came up with a numbskull number. And I said, cool. But here's the deal. I don't buy the beer anymore for you. I don't buy the food for you anymore. And you just, I give you this money at the first of the month. And the thing was, is by the fifth of the month, she'd be fucking completely flat, flat broke. And that's what ended up, you know, Doug sleeping on the fucking couch in the living room and shit, you know. But I stood tall by it, you know. Well, all some she, people need to learn how to manage money. All she needed to do is say I was wrong and say that you don't even pay rent. <laughs> or learn to manage money. Well, no, no, no. Because what she was, what it was is she had a $4,000 a month fucking house life that I was paying for and had no problem with it. And then said, I don't pay rent. You know, when you come home every day and you got a beer and you got your milk and you got your food and you got your lights on, your gas on, and everything just working 100% completely, you can't tell that person they're not paying rent, you know? Nope. And so anyhow, that's what happened to my relationship. So let's go to some more happier. What do you got? Um, I don't know. What do you want to know? I don't know. I feel like I bummed you out. No, um, of course you didn't. All right, so. You'd never bum me out, Dougie. What brought you here to Highland? Family. And which part of your family? My immediate family. Like I moved out here the first time with um with my sister. She was moving from Nashville and I was moving from Chicago and um came out here and our my my parents moved out here. Oh goodness. I guess about maybe 18 years ago. Well, you say your immediate family. Can you tell me, explain it a little deeper? It's yeah, your my mother. sister and I moved out here. No, like, just tell me, you know, your mother, your father, your sister. I don't know. Vinny. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got beer guy coming in. <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah, no, like, I moved out here with my sister. And my parents had moved out here maybe like five or six years prior to us moving out. Um, at the point my brother lived out here, um, he now lives in Nashville where we're from, one of the many states that I've lived in. And so um, that's, how I, that's how I got out here. And I um, got a job working for behavioral targeting for Yahoo. I do not understand what that is. It's some scary shit. That's what that is. Um, Let's say that you're on any one of the Yahoo platforms. And my job was to like, if I like, um, like the uh, Compton casino mm -hmm. was one of my big clients. So like if someone was doing a search, like a Google search or a Yahoo search, you know, but it's on the Yahoo platform for casinos in LA, if they spent like a certain amount of time, like we would know how much time they spent per page on each one of the articles. And then my job was to make sure that my customers, like the next site that they went to or the next thing that they would go to, I would make sure that I would spend, send the spiders out to, to give those like the Compton casino ad on all the sites that they, they saw after. That's that's a crazy yeah. Th I mean, they, they search engine that marketing. Years. Yeah, do they and search engine optimization is do what? They still need people that actually do that, like target people like that. Or? Oh, I'm sure that they do. Okay. I don't know. I just thought, I got I, thought, I got like, out I thought, of that. I thought, like, I thought bots did it. I, I didn't know there was an actual team that that did something like that. No, because I I had to pick the the keywords for the the customers that I would go to or my clients that I would go to. I get them sit down and I'd be like, okay, so these are the 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 keywords that we have right now, yep. you know, like your zip code, casino, blackjack, like whatever the case was that, you know, like if I did a search, if that came up and it was in that area or mm -hmm. around that vicinity, you know, they could pick whatever mile radius that they wanted. And then we would send the ads to them if they were looking at right, those engines. Right, right. Yeah. So 
you talk of that as if you don't do it anymore. No, I don't. I'm an office manager now for Bauer Pottery. There you go. Nice. So I work in the factory. And that's how you Well, the met, office in the factory. And that's how you met Matt? No, no. I met Matt through Employment and Community Options, which was um, we used to work with adults with disabilities. That's how I met Matt. Yeah, we um, had groups that spent like three to four days a week together for cooking class, um, for volunteer sites, for community sites, everything like that. So that's how I met him. And then, um, and then I got promoted to facilitator, and he was still support specialist. And then after that, I got promoted to manager, and then he became my facilitator. So that's how I got to know Matt. Yeah. I got Matt fucking every. I mean, are we good? Uh, yeah, we're good. Sorry, I ran something over. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, cool. So, yeah. uh, pottery. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, you know that's. I is it? Think about that. Oh. What happened? Oh, you unplugged. I, I have no. I have Google on, so she she's like thinking of. She, she's talking to you guys right now. Right, oh, she is. What she got to say? She, she's like, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this bitch talks to you every time, every yeah, now and does. then. Oh, it's they're always oh, listening. It's the Google thing. The, yeah, oh, the Google pod, yeah. yeah. They're always listening. All right. Well, I don't like her. Right. We're not going to talk to her again. No. <laughs> All right. Well. I yeah, Bauer po the pottery. So, and your responsibilities there? Yeah, I am um, office manager over production and operations, basically. What kind of pottery do they do? Um, anything from dinnerware to servingware to um, like animals. Like we have dog and cat bowls, but it's all ceramic. You know, it's a forty-eight thousand square foot factory. Wow. I mean, it, that's huge. It used to be the old, um, what's it? Orange, orange, uh, orange plant. Orange. It's right down here. You know where it is. Like right off the of No, Maine. I don't. No, I know it's, how to get it's to a the two minute, it's, it's a two minute walk from the bell. Okay. But I mean, I literally know how to get to the bar, <laughs> to the liquor store and back home. Uh, no, you got us to. Well, you you got a phone that day for the Fourth of July. Remember? No what, no. what is that place called? Was it Verizon? Oh, it wasn't. No, Verizon. I think it was Boost Mobile. Boost Mobile. Okay. Yeah, that's when I bought an. You Apple. knew where that was. I bought an Apple phone, and then I yeah gave it away two days later. Why'd you give it away? I hated it. it was like I didn't know how to use it. Did I you have a Droid. Yeah, I, I have a Droid. A I, I thought you had an iPhone. No. No, I can't figure it out. I'm too old. I missed the curve. That's right. You don't have an iPhone. Yeah, I didn't even have a phone for the longest time. I know, and you would never save my number. I mean, it never I had, saved. It was weird. I had a I had a uh, folding phone, you know, and it was like, hey, it was like, ah, oh, shit, man. I don't know. It works. I get a text. I get a phone call. I'm good, man. And then I was at the bell one day, and some guy looked over at me and he goes, he showed me his phone. He goes. Look at this app. He go, and it was uh, two people fucking, you know? And I go, I go, what the hell is that? And he goes, that's called Pornhub. And I owned a phone that day. I, I, yeah, no more flip phone for Doug, you know? Like, this exists? Yeah, it's like, what? oh, I need it. You didn't see Dougie for like 10 days. He comes back with a Popeye's arm. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> But the true gift of all of this technology is Bluetooth. Yeah, I, I get this good. Well, I simply love it because uh, I've worked construction my whole entire life since I was a kid. And uh, I would buy like little, you know, when I was young, man, I mean, we're dealing with transistors and shit. No matter where I worked, you could never get a signal. Hmm. You know, we'd get a roll of tie wire and hook it on there and have it up like 15 feet. We had like four radio channels. Yeah, and you could almost hear something, <laughs> you know. 
Oh, and it was always my dream, and I'd spend all kinds of money on these fingled fucking things and stuff, and they never, ever, ever, ever worked. But once I found out about Bluetooth, it's like, okay, it's fucking on now, you know? Yeah. And I've spent a technology. I spent a pretty penny on that shit. But uh technology is just so <coughs> advanced. Yeah. And it's like it's just like leaps and bounds from what like it was stagnant for like I feel like such a long time. And now it's just like Yeah, now I now I'm now almost just afraid of it. <laughs> Especially <laughs> after talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, that was like nine, ten years ago. The only that I was selling that. That's yeah. how long it's been. Because <laughs> since then, I worked for adults with uh, with disabilities, and then I went to the factory, oh. like management yeah. in the office. But yeah, at some point, I thought you told me you were working three jobs. I do. So, what's your second job? And don't count that one as the bartending part. No, I have the bell is yeah. one job. I'm an office manager for Bauer Pottery. That's my second, and then I also rover. Which is dog training, oh, dog, dog boarding. Oh, the dog stuff. I have a dog at my house right now. That yeah. they they've been with me for like years. And Argo is his name. He's a labradoodle. Oh. And oh my goodness, he's so badass. He is. I mean, he's just awesome. And every single time they need me to take him, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm on it. Because he's just the most remarkable dog. But I'm also, I'm training a Bouvier puppy right now. He's 13 weeks old. He's a lot of work. But yeah, no, so I do, I do Rover. So it's anywhere from house sitting to watch their animals to boarding. I do most of the boarding. To you know, they, training? To training. I do a lot of training, you know. Um, I do walking. It just depends on like, uh, like the app. It's like you pick and choose what you want. And then based on that, if the person is offering that service in your vicinity, then I get it. Like my name will come out to them and they're, they're able to pick me if they I, want me to watch their dog. I have a question. Cats. How do, how do you get started on that? Cause like I, I was trying to do it for a long time, but like every time I got any inquiries, they, they always backed out. Cause I was, I was a first timer. So if I had no like right? if I had no other ratings or experience, <laughs> talk like a country boy, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I'm I was a first timer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, you were. Yeah, see, that's working for me. <laughs> but, um, so it was harder and harder for me to actually find anybody who would trust me to like house sit their dogs or walk their dogs mm -hmm. because um, nothing but five stars. What, but for you, the, all the years well, I've been doing it. I mean, it. I can answer my own question here. You're a pretty blonde. So. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. You want to know how I got my start? Smarter, not harder. So anyway, um, we, my, my neighbor. That's okay. why we got this podcast. I love this. See, okay, we get this to is one of my favorite shit. stories of all time. Okay. Let's hear it. Oh, see, this is what I've been waiting for. Okay. Yes. So anywho, we live on a cul-de-sac. And our neighbors, they have five kids, but one of them's in college. Well, she was, and now she's here. But anyway, so at the time, he had four kids, anywhere from like a 14-year-old to I think she was a five-year-old at the time. And they all wanted another dog, which they had already given away two different previous dogs before because no one would ever take care of it. And then right. his son Isaiah that, was. That drives me crazy because it's always. I, I know so many people who like love dogs, but they're not dog people. Right. Like they can't. You have to be a dog. Like, like they can't. Mine train. go for two walks a day. Yeah. Mine, I, like I, I'm out there every single day, like for you know, yeah, like, like hours raised, on end, like English, all the time. I raised an English bulldog, and now I mean, now he lives with my grandparents, but he's he's the laziest piece of shit now. <laughs> but like, but he's he was so like I thought I'll get this dog, and he'll be he'll be lazy, and he'll be just like me. I don't have to walk him. But no, I still had to train him. I still had to get him. You know, I I, I tried to crate train him, but he was so. So stubborn. I just, you know, I found my way to for us to kind of, you know, engage with each other and stuff. And uh, yeah, I was walking him twice a day. And if if I missed, if I was a minute late from work on my lunch break, he was he shat the house. And <laughs> and but like I did that time to to work with this dog rather than give him away, you know, because yep. I knew because I loved it. It's a it. lot of yeah, work. It's a lot of work. 
It's a lot of work. Yeah. It is. And so they weren't willing to do it. Yeah. Isaiah wanted her her name was Nala at the time, wanted Nala, but didn't want to take care of her. So she kept on running like she would like they would let her outside during the day and she would dig underneath their their fence like every single day and run to my house cuz she, she not only loved me but she loved my boys. And so this is when I was working from home and I would be FaceTiming my older sister like almost every single day. Well, I mean, Monday through Friday, I would say at least like three to four days a week, I'd FaceTime her. And so I was working from home and this dog, like I always knew when she was there because my boys, I have two small dogs myself. They would always like, they had a certain bark for her. Like, the, you know, like I was like, Oh, I know Nala's like at the they, door. Like they could talk. They knew, they knew she was at the door. Yeah. So anyway, um, my sister, like I would let her in and I would wait for them to get off work because they would find out there was another hole in their fence, underneath their fence. And they always knew where to come because <laughs> she was always coming to my house. Yeah. So anyway, my, my older sister fell in love with her and she lived in Mississippi. She still lives in Mississippi, but she lived in Mississippi at the time too. And um, she was just like, fell in love with her. And she's like, well, you know, if they don't want her, when I come down for my bachelorette party, because she was engaged at the time, she's just like, I want to take her with me. And I was like, okay, well, I'll pitch it to Alex. Yeah. So the next day I told Alex, and I was just like, I'm just letting you know, like, because he had to pick him, pick her up from my house again. I was like, well, you know, just in case you want, like, she, she really enjoys it here. And my sister, which is a humongous animal lover, like she has two dogs herself and they're just her babies. I mean, she makes their meals like breakfast, lunch and dinner. Like that's how like die hard like for her baby she is. Oh, uh, oh, she actually like makes the meals. Yep. She yeah. she hand makes the the uh wet dog food for them. Yeah. Like blending I, it with all I, the stuff. I didn't even do that for all three of my kids. <laughs> but she does and then she knows like Jojo can't have onions. And Pepe doesn't like eggs, Man. you know, and it's like she knew what mm. both of them wanted. And like she would make breakfast, lunch and dinner for them on yeah. top of her like fiance or husband. To I be. tried doing that with my dog for a bit because, you know, bulldogs have sensitive stomachs. Yeah, and they stuff. do. And uh, you know what I found was the more organic stuff made him shit way more than than the regular dog food. So I found some stuff that he he was on a regular schedule for. But like by me trying to make the organic and give him eggs and shit, like that would make that would give him diarrhea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it does. But yeah, so I told Alex, I was like, listen, my sister would really like Nala if if y'all ever decide that you don't want her, he's just like, Well, let me talk to the wife. I'm like, All right, you do it. So the very next day he's like just like he's like, She said that she didn't care either way, so I'm gonna make an executive decision and say that your sister can have Nala. He's like, I'm doing her an injustice. She tries to get away every single day to come to your house. Like, I was like, you made the right choice because she will be so happy there. I'm like, I'm not kidding. And so um, when we went to New York for my sister's bachelorette, she flew out here because we went to stagecoach that year. Oh, it's a big awesome. festival. Yep. Yeah, it's fun. Did she bring Nala? Well, no. Okay. So, oh, she, I, but she was supposed to get Nala, but then we were like, we don't want her in New York city. We don't want her during her bachelorette party. I was just like, you know what? I'm coming out there in August, which is two months away. Um, so let me go ahead and just, I'll keep her until then. And then I'll fly her out when I fly out to Mississippi. Oh, I see what you did. So she was like, okay, that works. You know, I was like, I know it's hard for it's, it's two more months without because she was already in love with her, you know, and it was two more months without her actually having it. So now this is where Rover comes all into play. Okay. So I was trying to break into Rover at the time. And this is, you know, a couple of years ago. And I didn't have anyone like no one had hired me before, you know, because I had just gotten on the service. And I told my sister, I was like, listen, you get like there's a code that I can give you as a new timer that you can get like a free one session. So you need to sign Nala up for that because I am watching oh, her. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
See what I did there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So I am watching her, you yeah. know, and she's just like, and I was like, so we experimented with a couple different things because every like, you know, like once every two to th three weeks, she would hire me for a walk. And so I would learn how the walks went, which they they have your like they have your navigation. All they they show you every itty bitty turn and crevice I take and how how long it is. And then I, I I can put in there if they pooped or peed or you know like anything like that or took a drink at a at a right. fountain or something. Yeah. It's like they have they have all those things and I always take pictures of every single one every single time I rover every piece of shit. No, I never take. Oh, a picture okay, of I, I'm sorry. But a picture of the dog. Okay, okay. But no, I, like I mean, but the every, walk. Every was time cool. she submits it, it's a picture <laughs> of you. Well, I, <laughs> I I'm more of a grover than a rover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that's how I broke in because she was a reoccurring and her last name was different from mine because she had just gotten married. Perfect. By the time I actually started rovering for her, yeah. her married name was completely different than my last right, name. Right, right. So then, you know, and then she would do that. So reoccurring, giving me five stars and then that's write all, reviews yeah. and stuff. So that's how I got started. Got now. it. And then the first the first walk that she ever got on, like Rover paid for it. Right. Like I didn't have to pay for it. I still got paid. She got it for free. And that's how it all started. Yeah. But I have a feeling that's not even for the money. That's just for the love of it, huh? Of course. Yeah. Because you know, I love all a... three of my jobs. Yeah. <laughs> all in different ways, you yeah. know. But you can make some pretty good money doing Rover though. Yeah. Well, I mean you make some real good money. Yeah. So like your third job, the bell. Yeah, I bartend. Yeah, you get to meet guys like me, man. Exactly. <laughs> you know, rough and tumble, the Grovers. Well, you I'm get... glad I had already met you, Dougie. Yeah. Because, see, I was on the other side of the bar for, I don't know, how, like eight, nine years. Yeah. <laughs> and But you were just such a lovely woman. I mean, from the, Thank you. from the very first second that I heard you say a word, I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Now... Don't get me wrong. When I first met you, I wanted to get in your panties, man. But <laughs> you've just... You say that every time. I know. But I kind of don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and no, and I don't want that to come in a bad way. I don't you're, think it is at all. You're just such a wonderful woman that... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to fuck up our relationship because of of uh, a relationship. Does that make sense? I think we are amazing friends. Yeah. And, and we're uh, good with friends. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't tell me I look beautiful. No, I will never stop. And I, <laughs> and I good. will. Good. Don't. And, and I'll always want to get in your bed. <laughs> I'm just not going to. You know, I mean, gotcha. Gotcha. I'm an old man. I have restraint. Du du duly noted. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I'm look. I'll, okay. I'll refrain myself. Now, hold on. Okay. I'm 58, you know. Now, maybe one day I'll be 78, and I don't know how old you'll be, but you'll be 20 years older and all useless. Then maybe. <laughs> You know, you'll be all flabby and all fucked up, you know? You think so? No, I don't. Only time can tell. Well, I have a feeling when I get to be 78, I'm going to be a skinny fucking old, probably bald. You're 18 years older than I am. See? So in 18 years, you're going to be... No, you're going to I'm going to look like you? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? I'd still be your friend. Hang on, hang on, Doug. This is news to me. You're you're not 78? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you told him? No. Oh, okay. I let everybody get no, that's just That's just what my eyes see. <laughs> No, come on. This is pure handsomeness just going out. I fuck with you. I love you. You're, uh, you're a handsome man. 78 going on 50. Yeah, that's right. I'm working backwards now. Yeah. Actually, can I can I bring something up that, that I think you guys can discuss? Yeah. Um I well, you just brought up something interesting, I think. Um, <clears throat> which was you you were saying 
you're now friends and now but you're like but i would still get in your panties if i could right oh absolutely oh i'd fuck up this relationship like that (laughs) man (laughs) right but it's gonna take her to do it and i but the thing is is you know i take subtle hints like no (laughs) or like (laughs) my boyfriend yeah Yeah. You yeah, know, there, there's that one. Yeah, because yeah, like, I've weird. Because I've been, there, I've been. There. I also really, really, truly love her uh, company, man, and and yeah, no. and friendship. Yeah, I, mean, I understand. Yeah, and my man. Yeah, her man. Oh, yeah. that's oh, yeah. awesome. Oh yeah, yeah that, oh yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that's a big well, one. And, that's a big one. <laughs> well, and it's kind of difficult for a friend. Uh, a man woman friendship to make it through with the boyfriend. Yes. Yeah, but I have a lot that's of kinda, male but, friends though. No, but I mean like truly like it when is I, hard. When I look at Ken, it it's like, hard. come on, dude, I'm just fucking around. He knows that. Yeah. He knows that. I know he knows that. And but he I, loves Matt too, which is like Matt and I were best friends before I ever even knew Kenny. Well, but the thing is that Matt is not of his truth of his I am, man. I'm a fucking piece of shit, you know? No, you're not. Yeah. No, I, you're not. No, I you're gotta, not. I don't believe in that one bit. No, but I make no. I make Ken go through the phases <laughs> to get to it, man. If you think Well, about yeah, it. because you talk about me. Yeah. You know but what? I I think he's yeah. like he's like we're, we're stable enough. Yeah, <clears throat> like it, we don't have to worry about that. I that's, think that's good. I think that's what that's. I think that's what that's what my point was, is that I've I've known plenty. I, like I've had plenty of girls uh, who were friends that like honestly, I honestly I've been better friends with after we hooked up. <laughs> so so like they you know they go on they get married or whatever but like. If they have a more secure, you know, uh, significant other, then we can remain friends. But if right. not, then usually it doesn't work out. And then I, under- but I understand that, you know, I, but, but I also I'm like, like, it, it's just, it's a weird kind of dynamic, you know, like I had an ex that, that I, uh, that hated me having any female friends. And I, I had plenty of, of girlfriends that I, that I really enjoyed their company of. Yeah, I okay. pro- I had probably dated maybe one. So or that, and that's why I like Kenny. Them. Yeah, but I because he's. But I think though he's at, okay with me having guy friends. Yeah. Okay, but at the he end, has women friends. But at and right. I've met him. I've hung out with them. Like well, and and if he and says like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out for dinner with Nicole sure. or, uh, or Kelly or something," I'm like, of, "You know but, what? Yeah, why not?" Yeah. But at, you at, know, I told him I was doing the podcast. No problem. He's yeah. doing the the jingles for you. Yeah, well, it's, he, all, it's all about being like. I think it's all about being like. Uh, you know, uh, being trust. secure. Yeah, and, and security and, and trust. Being secure and trusting your your yeah. that but your partner. I, I also think at the end of the day, like I mean. I mean, all you have to do is look at us when we look at each other. Well, no, but no, but when I think of you, I think of Ken. Yeah, you know, I mean, you and your old man. It's been such a big part of my life since I moved back from Kentucky. For sure, I'm a. uh, Yeah, I'm just a single guy, you know, and but uh, I think of you guys as a true couple. Well, yeah, and we're, I would, we're together. Well, and I would never, ever, ever break that sanctity of that. Right. I would never, ever, you know, I, know. I, I throw I my hands up in the air. I'm a gentleman. No, that you know, at the end of the day, you know? Hell, I was at that And bar, you're my friend. I was at that bar one day, the bell. <laughs> what? What's the bell? Where's that? Yeah, it's down the street there. It's on Palm Avenue in it Island. Is? No way. Yeah. A new there. spot? Did it just open up? Greatest bar ever. But I was sitting there and this drunk girl came in and she looked at me and she goes, you have the greatest blue eyes I've ever seen, man. And I said, yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. Let me buy you a beer, you know. And then it started getting a little serious. She was saying, like, I'd like to take you home. And she's okay. telling me what she's going to do to me and all this stuff. And I was like, where are you coming from? She was coming from another bar where they were drinking, like, tequila shots. Which one? Do you remember? I don't want to. Okay. We're, right. 
All right, never. never yeah, mind. I don't want it to get too close to this person, but Carry anyhow, on. she's like, yeah, I want to take you home and suck your dick, you know? And I was like, nice. wow. I go, how about, how you're about, like, like, how about you do the well, no, she was, she was obviously drunk, you know? And yeah. I was like, man, this is like rape, you know, I'm, I'm a pirate, but I'm a fucking fucked up rapist, you know? So I told her, how about we exchange phone numbers and we go out on a date tomorrow, you know? And so we exchanged phone numbers and the night went on and she was all over me, man. I couldn't get the bitch off of me, you know? And it was kind of hard, you know? <laughs> not, not, not. <laughs> yeah, two I, things yeah, were hard. I, I see what you did there. But uh, anyhow, it got to be about 3 o'clock the next day, and I, I dialed that number, and I'm going, and she's all, hello? And I'm certain she was looking, Doug? Who the fuck's Doug, you know? And I go, yeah, he, we hooked up last night, remember? We hooked up last night, remember? And she goes, oh, yeah, about that. And so I, that made me feel really good, too, you know? What like, part? What part made you feel really good? That I didn't fucking let her suck my cock the night before, man. Because she wouldn't have remembered? No, no, no. She would have remembered. Right, but you wanted to take it a little bit. I mean, no, I in this day and age, no, you never what? know. What, anyway, continue. Okay, continue what, what really would have been nice is if she went, yeah, how about I come over and suck your dick? That would have been the best case scenario. But I knew it wasn't going to be because she was, I don't want to, number one, I don't know. I'm not into drunk, fucking drunk people, you know? Uh, yeah. I like buzzed people like me. <laughs> it's like, Arr. you know, we're going, oh, my leg, I got a cramp. <laughs> it's kind of my deal. Yeah, definitely no. <laughs> I, 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 I can't do drunk or buzzed. No. It's got to be, ooh, I always got to be a little buzzed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so have continue you, your story. Okay. I don't even have, no, no I'm see. just, I'm just saying like, like married couples or, and couples, <clears throat> once I meet you as a couple, you're just a couple. I won't ever, ever go towards nothing. Uh, do you ever find people overstepping their bounds with you? Because you are a very beautiful woman. Well, thank you, Dougie. Um, at the bar? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably just through <laughs> life, I would think. You're so lovely. I'd, I'd imagine at the bar. What's How about... <laughs> What is the most awkward pickup line you've ever heard? The most awkward one? Yeah. Like, or, you know, because number one, you ain't going to deal with it. Probably the ones I use. Uh, no, no. I had one the other night that. Um, What's the Kenny greatest like, pickup line? See that now, now. Yeah, it, this is about your deal. I'm just giving you ideas. Wait, no. Okay, so I will tell you one of the best ones I heard, but it wasn't like he wasn't picking up on me. He was picking up on my sister, which he met. She just came in from Connecticut. Okay. But anyway, so this was, I don't know, like maybe like seven, eight years ago. We were at Lake Alice in Riverside because we were bar hopping. Um, and we were at Lake a Alice because my ex at the time lived, lived, she still lives in Riverside. But anyway, lived in Riverside. So I already had a man and my sister was single. And so like we sent her up to get another round of beers at the bar in Lake Alice, the big one, you know, inside when we could used to be able to go inside. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she's ordering the beers and then this guy walks up to her and like stands right next to her in the bar. And then he stares at her until she looks at him. And then he's just like, and she's like, and then he, he turns to her and he's like, since, since you've been checking my ass out. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you my name. 
<laughs> I thought that was funny. And she's like, what the? She was like, she's like, that was awesome. I was like, yeah, yeah that was a good pickup line. I like that. He's like, you know, because he was checking her ass out. And he was like, oh, um, now that you've been staring at my ass, I'll, I'll tell you my name. I thought that was a good one. My, a good one, right? yeah. my second wife, uh, I seen her walking out of a car. And I walked up to her and I told her, uh, you don't know me, but you're going to marry me. You're going to have my baby, my first child. I mean, you're going to have my baby, but I don't want it to be uncomfortable. Can I buy you a couple drinks? <laughs> and she looked at me and said, well, I ain't going to have to do either of the first two, but I'll let you buy me a couple drinks. And she fucking married me and had a baby with me. So I think that was my best pickup line I ever used. You know? yeah. so, sounds more like a threat. Yeah. Oh, every, <laughs> oh everything I do is a threat. <laughs> but you made sure on those. I did. Yeah, you did. Hey, I. you know, I'm I, I don't know. I may not be the best looking man. I may not be the prize of the a parade or anything like that, but I think I'm a pretty decent dude. And uh, and you're my friend. And you're my friend. You'll always be my friend, Dougie, and you know that. And I love you. I really do. I truly you're, love you as you're well. You're very special to me. We got, we got 10 minutes before wrap. So. All right. We got 10 minutes. So Alrighty. Now that we're all in love with each other, <laughs> who do we hate? No, we don't want to talk about people we hate. Let's not go negative here. We hate yeah. Ryan over here in the corner. I hate, I hate professional bowlers. <laughs> yeah, those assholes. Yeah. Now get me on some wee bowling. Yeah. Oh, oh we bowling. There you go. Let's look that shit up right now. Oh, oh, oh you have it. Okay, so okay, Dougie. Hold on. Yeah, you tell the story, my dear. Dougie and I. It's your deal. It's my deal. Okay, so Dougie and I. Do the we used to do the wee bowling all the time, but um, so we got so good that you know, like 300 would like fly down, like there was nothing, you know. I even would do left handed and still bowl 300, and I still bowl right handed, and I'm a left handed person, and I bowl three, yeah. See, I bowl both 300s on both, right? Yeah, I know. So then, because it used to be like the winner of like whoever, like let's say you got a 286 or a yeah. 294 or something, the winner bought a beer. Well, we were getting so good that it was just like, you know, this is boring. Yeah, well, and, because, like, and I don't want to keep buying you beers. So then <laughs> I was the one, thank you. Yeah. I was just like, listen, you know what? Unless I get a 300, because I normally beat everyone all the time. All the time. Like, that was a no questions. I was like, but unless I get a 300, that's when, like, anyone that bowls a 300, I'm going to buy them a beer while I'm there. And then that's our rule, you know? Yeah. So whenever Dougie bowls a 300. Well, it's, I think. How many rules... 299s have you had? Oh. How many oh. 299s oh. have you had? Oh, and it's so devastating, oh. Ryan. The very last Ryan, pin. Ryan, the very last pin, and one sits up. And then the all whole all the time this guy yeah and then the, and then the whole bar looks at me and goes loser <laughs> you bowl at two ninety nine and you're a loser most of the time he's the one calling himself that where everyone else like damn I'd be lucky to have a two ninety nine I was like yeah but it's not a three hundred now is it Doug no it isn't no free beer for you ah uh, then I get all pissed I gotta go I, take I, a lead. I agree it's you're a, a, you're a fucking loser on that one man. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his average, you know, like like everyone else is like, you know, like like teetering on like bronze and shit. Where <laughs> Dougie's gold, well, good I, as gold. I uh, when I, <laughs> when I got introduced to the Bell Bar, I walked in there. I won a thousand dollars at the uh, San Manuel Casino. Yeah, the I casino. hit a I hit a royal flush on the. Uh, poker machine nice yeah and i won a thousand bucks now i had just moved in the to highland the day before or the night before actually oh, wow and i called up my roommate her name's Rhonda. uh and i said 
hey, you told me there was a bar down the street. And she goes, yeah, you just go down Highland to Palm Avenue and you make a right. And it's about a, I don't know, quarter mile or so and look on the left and it'll be, it's like an old fucking place, but it's got like beer signs out there or whatever. It looks like a bar, you know? Right, you know. So I drove over there and at that point I had really long hair. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody thought I was a homeless methamphetamine addict. I can, that's the only <laughs> thing I can get close to of what the perception of somebody meeting the first time was. So I walked in that bar and I sat down and I go, hi. And they were doing that wee bowling shit as I mm -hmm. walked in. Nice. Yeah. But <laughs> they weren't being nice to me. And I was, I was sitting there as like, wow, what's your people's problem? You know, and they were all old, all old fucking people, you know? And uh, so at one point, uh, Martha said, yeah, what would you like to drink? And I go, I go, I'll have a Bud Light can. That'll be fine. And she goes, okay. And then I looked at her and I go, what's it take to ring that bell? And there was a lot of people at the bar. And she goes, well, if I ring that bell, you got to buy everybody a beer in this building. And I go, well, ring that fucking bell. Because I had just won a thousand fucking dollars, you know. Up yonder, <laughs> that's MMO. And so I'll never forget, she was, she was going to go ring it. And she goes, I got to see some money before I do this. I was so fucking embarrassed and humiliated, you know. No, you, no. I was. It hurt my really? feeling to no compare. Hurt my feeling altogether. But normally we take a card. She did, She knew I didn't have a goddamn card, and I didn't have. Well, a then card. yeah, you should have the money though. But no, that's just protocol. But yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> but it hurt my feeling. It's my I'm first sorry. time. I know. No, 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 no. I'm. We've kissed and made up. Of course so. you have. You bought this house from her. <laughs> <laughs> so I love Martha. So they. Uh, <laughs> So anyhow, I just stood up and I put fucking like 906 out. And, you know, I stopped and got some cigarettes or whatever. I go, is that enough? And she went and rang that bell. She said, my name's Martha. And then she forced me to listen to her poem. The bell poem. And oh, then, my goodness. No one and, can tell it like Martha. And then they, I don't even know it. But. And then they proceeded to make me do wee bowling. So they made me a little guy, you know, uh, an avatar, an avatar. And he fell in love. No, with no, the no. With the oh, bell. No. Yeah, with the bell. But I told him, hey, when I used to bowl as a kid, we used to do this thing called beer frames, you know. And if three people like you bowl with four people, mm -hmm. if three people get a strike and one guy doesn't, you all have to be on the same team. Uh, that guy's got to buy the other three people a beer. Oh, see, that's that's where it gets crazy. That's oh. why I said the three hundred club. No, but they would come yeah, in. They would come in with beer, beer chips, yeah. and that's when I decided I'm coming in every day. I'm gonna learn how to do this fuck goddamn thing, and I fucking started kicking their ass and took back all my beard chips. So yes, yeah, she sure did. And yeah, yeah. You're, and you're fucking good. Like you run the table. Holly, Holly, Kira. Yes. Dougie. Love you with all my heart. I love you too. Dougie. I know you're running out of time. We're running out of time. You but said it's been fun. Yeah. But in, uh, remember Thank you for having me. I'm glad I'm got to be your Marilyn. And remember what you said you were going to do at the very end. Well, this is Kara, and that's my deal. Hey. Ah, God bless you. Music. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Where's the music? We got it. Oh, where? No, he's, he's got oh, it. Oh, it was amazing. Thank you so much, yes. Kara. I love I'll you. Be right back. I'm, I'm gonna run it was a.
It has a little rough. I got it pissed like a racehorse, too. <laughs> That's right. I'll add it in my All right, brother. Ryan, thank you so much, my friend.